All right, welcome. How are you guys everybody doing out there? This is the last one from chapter seven. Uh, and we're just gonna calculate R by hand really quickly. And just to understand where the calculation comes from, I'm gonna do a quick little review. We talked about it last lesson, but it's really important that you understand where it comes from. So I have a scatter plot here, and before I find the R value, which is, um, the correlation coefficient, we're gonna, we, we, or any regression stuff we're going to do, we just got to check conditions before we do this and make sure that uh, the data is quantitative, it's straight, and it there are no outliers. Well, it's straight, there are no outliers, and it's quantitative. This is some number here and some number here that they're related, so I'm just telling you that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize all of these x values coming down and landing on a... Um, you know, in a histogram down here, and I'd have some histogram that would look uh, uh, something like this. You know, I'd have this all these sections, and this histogram, um, all these data values, all these x values would have a, a center, a mean called x bar, and it's a very important uh, value here. And um, and also this the, these y values, if they all came here, they'd make another uh, histogram over here um, with a center, and that center would be called y bar. And we use those x bar, y bars for a lot of things. One thing we use it for is to calculate um, the standard deviation of all the x's and the standard deviation of all the y's. The standard deviation of x we call sx, and the standard deviation of the y's is called sy. And remember what the standard deviation is, it's just the average distance to the mean, and then we find z scores and all that stuff from that, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, so I get this x bar, y bar, and I just uh, project this x bar up and this y across, and I've broken my, my scatter plot into four quadrants, which is really nice. And we talked last time that these guys contribute positives to the R value, these guys contribute negatives. I'm going to get a little bit more technical um, about that. But before we even start doing this, we know the R value has no units, so it must be calculated from something with no units, and it is, it's calculated from z-scores. So what we actually do is we trans we change all of these all of these x values you know, whatever these are, feet or whatever, I'm not sure what they are, we change them to their z-scores. You say, okay, what, do your val what value are you? What's your z-score? Basically, we ask them all, how many standard deviations away from the mean are you? And obviously, you can see, if suppose our curve looks like this, then and the mean was somewhere around here, then one standard deviation would probably be like here, here would be two standard deviations, down one standard deviation, down two standard deviations. So this would be a z of one, a z of two, zero, negative one, negative two. And the same thing here, we come down, here's a couple standard deviations below the mean, couple standard deviations above the mean, yada yada, okay? So what we do is I ask all these guys to figure out their z's for y, their z's for x's, and I replot them on a z axis. And the z axis is just a standard axis. There's no units now, and now I can find this r value. And the r value is calculated simply by taking the, the product of, of each x and uh, of the z of the x and the z of the y, adding them together. So I ask this coordinate, what are you, what's your zx, what's your zy, Okay, thank you. Multiply them. And then I add it to these coordinates multiplied together. So I'm just multiplying the coordinates by each other, each xy pair. Um, let, me get, let me explain. Um, so let's look for a value. Um, like, a, like one of these, suppose that, let's look at a point. And um, let's look at this point um, right around here. Say uh, the point that's right in this area. And I look down, and it has a zx of 1. So it's one standard deviation above the mean in the x direction, and it's one standard deviation above the mean in the y direction, and you can see up here it would be a point that's about right here in the x, and about one standard deviation in the y, so it's somewhere right around here, okay, um, whoops, sorry, it's one standard deviation above here, and about one standard deviation above there, so it's probably a point right around here, and I want to figure out what that's going to contribute to this R calculation, which is the sum of the zx's. Well, zx is one, zy is one, so I'm just going to multiply one times one, and this contributes 1 to the numerator of this equation. Okay, so it's contributing 1. And notice that 1 is just the area of this rectangle. 1 times 1. And actually, if you multiply any of these coordinates, suppose I took the point right above here. See this point here? This point here has a z of 1 in the x direction, a z of 2 in the y direction. So it's 1 standard deviation in this direction, and 2 standard deviation in the y direction, so it's probably this point right here, okay, or point right around there. Um, and it's going to contribute 1 times 2. So it's going to contribute 2, which is the area of this rectangle. So all of these guys in this quadrant are con contributing areas of rectangles connected to them. Like this point right here is going to contribute the area of this rectangle. Uh, this point down here is going to contribute the area of this rectangle. And they're all contributing, this guy's going to contribute this little rectangle area. And this guy over here, this rectangle. So they all contribute a bunch of rectangles. And they're all positives adding it. Um, but points over here 
are a little bit different because they one of their coordinates is negative. The z-score in the x direction, like for this point right here, the z-score is about uh, negative 0.9 or like around negative 1. Let's, let's take an easy one. Let's just pull it back here so it's right at negative 1. So this guy's contributing negative 1 here and it's 1's up above the mean. So some of you, how can you have a negative z-score one way and positive z-score the other way? Well, it's easy. If it's a value um, that's, if the x value is behind the mean, so it's down here, all of these guys have a z-score, an x-z-score of negative 1. Okay, all of these guys. x-z-score down 1 standard of negative 1. And it can be above in y and have a z-score in y, a positive 1. So you can have now one negative, one positive, you know that's how coordinates work. So these guys are contributed to a positive and a negative, and you know what happens when I multiply a negative times a positive? I get a negative. So these guys, the rect all these rectangles, I'll draw them all in red, I guess, and color them in. These guys are all contributing negative values, all these red ones. And these guys are contributing negative areas, all these rectangles, negative area, negative area. Okay. What about down here? These guys are negative, negative. When I multiply negative times negative, I get more positive. So these guys are all contributing positives. All the areas of all these rectangles, this whole rectangle. This guy's contributing this big rectangle. And notice, as I go out, it gets, I mean, think about this. This point right here is the point one, one. It can only contributes one. When I go out to here to the point two, two, it contributes two times two. It contributes four. It contributes four to this. And I go to the, if I have a point three, three, it's contributing nine. So it's really, I mean, the further you go, it's really increasing um, uh, the amount contributed to this. So what, what do we do at the end? Notice what it's saying. It's saying add up all these products. Add up all the area of these rectangles. So I'm going to add up all these positive guys and these positive guys, then subtract the area of these guys because they're negative, and I'm going to get an R value. So you can see that in a positive association, there's going to be lots of positive areas or squares or rectangles that we're going to add up, and, and only a few negatives. But if this had to be a negative association, then there'd be a scatter going this way, and we'd have lots of negative rectangles and not many positive rectangles. So hopefully that helps you make sense out of what we're doing. So anyway, let's do a quick calculation. I took a very simple one. I took one that has an R value of exactly 1, and I did that calculation because... I don't know, it would be easy, but all of them, you're going to do the same way, but I just thought this would be a nice uh, way to show it. So I took the X values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the Y values 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I graphed them, I checked the condition, yes, they're quantitative, yes, it's straight enough, it's perfectly straight, and I don't see any outliers. So this is actually going to have an R value of 1. Um, I know, because I did it already, but let's talk about how we do it. Well, I need to convert all these X's to Z scores, and I need to convert all these Y's to Z scores. How am I going to do that? Well, the same way I always do it, I'm going to use the trusty Z formula. To change something to a Z score, all you do is you take the data value, you figure out how far it is from the mean, and you divide it by the standard deviation. And that tells you the number of standard deviations away from the mean. That's what a Z score is. So this thing is, this question, this is saying, how many standard deviations away from the mean are you? One and a half? You're one and a half standard deviations away? Uh, and your z-score must be 1.5. Okay, that's that's pretty much what it says. So let's uh, do the calculations out. So I'll just explain to you. Um, I take each data value, 1 through 5, and I put it in a little table here, 1 through 5. And the first thing I calculated was how far each value was from the mean. Well, the mean here is 3. I added them all up, divide by 5. You can see 3 is right in the middle. So how far away is 1 from the mean? Well, 1 minus 3. It's a negative 2. And then I took that distance, that x minus x, and I divided by the standard deviation of x. Which is, how did I get the standard deviation of x? Well, I put it in my calculator, and I found out that it was 1.58. So I'll call that, I forgot to put that in, so I'll, I'll write it right here. My standard deviation of x, 1.58. My standard deviation of y was 3.16. So I just put this in L1. And I actually put this in L2, and I ran two VAR stats, and it gave me the summary statistics for both lists, which was kind of cool. Um, anyway, so I take that distance, negative 2, I divide it by 1.58, and I get negative 1.26. And I did the same thing here. 2, I got the distance was negative 1. I did this divided by 1.58 to get my Z. 
I took 3, which was, is 0, the distance to the mean, because 3 is the mean, divided by 1.58. 4 is 1 away, 4 minus x bar is 1, divided by 1.58, 2, divided by 1.58, and that's what I did. So I just took the distance, how far it was away, and divided by sx. So I took this column, each one of these, divided by 1.58. And for the y's, I did the same thing. How far is 2? This, for this list, I did the one by stats again. You can see the mean is 6. So I said, how far away are you from the mean? This guy's obviously 4 away. This guy's 2 away. This guy's 4 away, 2 away. These guys are below the mean, so their distance is they're negative away. Um, so I'm negative 4 away, negative 2, 4, 4. There. Divided each one by the standard deviation. And so what I have here is this column I circled are my Z scores for X's. So these guys right here are all my Z's now. These are all ZX. These guys here are all my ZY's. So all I have to do is for the formula is multiply ZX times ZY. And I get this. This times this. I get this. This times this. I get four zero. I get this and this and this. And it just so happens these guys are all <clears throat> equally spaced because it's a linear function and that's how that's only going to happen when it's linear. Obviously, you saw on the other one that sometimes it's the z's negative, sometimes it's positive, one's is negative, one's positive, and you multiply them by each other. But this is just how you do it. I took all these zx, zy's, these products. Now these are all the areas of those rectangles. Added them all up, all those areas up. Notice there aren't any negatives because um, these guys are all in the first and third quadrants. I take the sum of them all, um, let's see, 1.622, I get 2, and I'm going to take that 2, oh sorry, 4, that's 2, that's 2, 4, the sum of all of them, I add them all up, and I remember what my equation is, it's sum of zx, zy, so I have that, that's from over here, that's 4, divide by n minus 1, there's 5 value points, 4 divided by 5 minus 1, is 4 over 4 is 1, I have an r of 1. And if I had done the z of this, if I, you notice that they're all on this line right here. So I took this area, this area, this area, this area, and added them all together. Remember what we did. This was uh, 1.26, 1.26, so notice it's over 1.26, about 1.26, and I found that area. This is 0 .63, 0 .63, I found that area. And this is 0.63 out of that area, 1.26 out of that, and I added those four things together, and this one contributed zero. Notice there weren't any in the negative quadrants. Um, and there won't be when you have a perfectly linear uh, scatter plot, but that doesn't ever happen in, really in nature or anywhere. You're never going to see it like that, but I just wanted to show you one that came out to one because I thought it was pretty cool. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to see this equation. You're, you're, going to, you're going to take the equation and remember what it says. It says the R value is simply the sum of all the ZX's times the ZY's divided by N minus 1. So you take every coordinate change it to z values, to the z scores, multiply the coordinates, find all these areas, add up all these areas, and then you're done. That's it. There's your uh, calculator in my hand.